So in this uh, tutorial, I'm going to show you how I'm blocking this shawl. I actually recorded this as a live on Instagram. So it was recorded as an Instagram live, uh, which meant I had to record it in um, uh, portrait rather than landscape. So I apologize for that. I appreciate that portrait is better on YouTube. So I do apologize for that. Um, the link to the pattern will be below the video. In the pattern, in the video, I also refer to the garment that's hanging on my dress form while I'm uh, filming this, which is Trebian, um, which was released the same day that I recorded this video. Um, so you can find the detail, I'll pop the details of that below this video as well. But uh, I just wanted to explain um, how this was recorded. Okay, thank you very much for watching and uh, here is the uh, blocking tutorial. My name is Anakin and I'm um, trying to block a new shawl. So we've got a few people joining us. Please tell me your name and where you're from, uh, where you're watching from this lunchtime. You can just about see my new pattern here. I'll just bring it in. There we go. Um, there's more about that on my grid. Uh, and also uh, an IGTV video. Also, if you're on my newsletter list, I just sent out a newsletter this morning about that uh, new pattern with some discounts as well. So, um, let's get on with what we're doing today. So I'm going to block uh, a new show. I actually finished it last week, but it was a busy weekend teaching at a lovely knitting retreat in Cardiff. So I just didn't get around to blocking it before we went or when we came back. So, um, who we got watching? We got somebody from Canada. I've never been to Canada. I'd love to go. Nice to see you here, Carol. Tell me where you're watching from. Um, whether you're from the UK, somewhere else in Europe, North America. I've uh, got quite a few people joining us now. So, um, right. So I'm going to start blocking this shawl. Um, I'm using my Nipro blocking mats. Now there are. I got the Nipro ones. I got two sets in total and this is quite a big shawl so I probably need most of them. You can get similar kind of foam jigsaw type mats from other shops as well. Um, here in the UK I noticed yesterday in uh, Hals Halfords, I can't remember the name, Halfords they have some similar ones but they're like probably like twice, four times as big. Um, toy things but kids play on, you can also use jigsaw, any kind of jigsaw mat really, or anything that you can put um, needles into. Now I'm doing this on my dining room table. I did say this is a really big shawl, um, but I'm still doing it on my dining room table and I'll show you how I use the chairs around the table to kind of support bits of the shawl that don't fit on the table. So I've laid off, add enough of these to cover the table and then I'll add more as we go. I've also got, I have got my um, blocking uh, knit blockers from Nipro, um, Knitters Pride in the US, I think. Um, they are like that. Can you see that? Um, I don't know whether I'll be using those or not, but I've got them here just in case. And then I got my blocking wire, um, blocking pins, um, which I've just, I just used these T pins. I don't know whether you can see those. Probably not. So I'm going to tip it down a minute so you can see what I'm doing. But I've just uh, rinsed my shawl. I soaked my shawl in lukewarm water. I rolled it up into a thick towel and I'm just squeezing as much water out of it as I can. It's a linen shawl, um, pure linen from Sweden. And I normally for wool, I will soak it for about 10 minutes. The linen you may need a little bit longer because it takes longer for the water to penetrate the fibres properly. But I probably didn't soak mine for much more than about 15 minutes. Just chuck my towel on the floor. So let me show you, it's still fairly wet but it's not kind of dripping anymore. If I show you just quickly, that's what it looks like. Um, be a bit careful about lifting stuff up when it's wet because you don't want the weight to pull it out of control. But because this isn't too thin a yarn, it's um, a four ply yarn rather than a lace weight yarn. If it was lace weight and really delicate, I'd be more careful. So I'm going to tip the camera down so you can see what I'm doing. Um, and then I'll explain what I'm doing as we go along. Okay, there we go. So because we're doing this live on Instagram, I can't film in portrait, in uh, landscape, which would probably be better 
um, we have to do it in landscape uh, in can't do it in landscape we have to do it in portrait which means I'm struggling to see any comments so if I don't answer your question hang on till the end and then repost it and I'll answer it so this shawl basically has if you look at the top here it starts here with just a few stitches I can't remember how many 11 I think and then um, you increase along the edges and along three spines that kind of radiate out from the center like that so it's got kind of four triangles um, it's a while since I've done a shawl this shape but I really like it so um, I thought I would go for that so the first thing the top edges along here are straight now um, they're actually going to come when you block them it looks like it's almost like a um, square um, if you knit it in the round it would actually be a square so um, which means this is going to take a lot of space so I'm going to pull this right down there actually and so I can put the blocking wires in here now along the edge I've got two stitches in from the edge I've got yarn overs on every other row and they're really good because it means that you can um, just take the you can see this you can just take the wires in and out of the yarn overs so I go in under two yarn overs over two yarn overs under two yarn overs or every other yarn over I guess it is not two um so I go in and out every other yarn over like that you see that so I'm going to just finish doing that here along the edge here now you can block it without wires but it is a lot more difficult especially along this straight edge it's a lot more difficult to get a straight edge when you're doing it without wires so I do recommend uh, using wires you can probably get if you I mean these are nipro ones I can't remember how much they how much I paid for them but they're not cheap considering they're just metal wires really um I guess you can probably get them from like hardware shop or something um just sort of file off any rough edges if you're a bit handy and you've got the right equipment uh, I don't know so I'm going to go along this edge as well I'm just going to do this as quickly as I can because I appreciate this is a little bit difficult to see uh, so we'll just try and do this as quickly as we can this uh, shawl is knitted in uh, Bexpo which is a Swedish company and it's Swedish 100% Swedish linen and it's about four ply weight I bought the yarn from Knit with Attitude in London um, I've used three colors I used all of the gray the silver gray except for a safety margin I'm normally allowed about 10% safety margin so about 10 grams left out of a 100 gram skein um, and then I didn't use all of the purple and green um, I haven't actually weighed the left of the yarn yet so I'm not 100% sure how much I used it I used less of the green uh, you could just do this in two colors if you did want to do three I will in the pattern I will put like the total amount I used of each color so if you want to do a different amount um, just use two colors for example you can do that I should have had at the end here you can see when I started the lace I did purple, green, grey, silver, so purple, green, silver, and then purple, and then I was going to do green and then silver for the edging, but I kind of ran out of um, steam really, I kind of, I just got really, just wanted to finish this, I started it when I was on holiday in September, and I didn't finish it on holiday, and I just got to a point where I just wanted to finish it, so I kind of did one less green repeat than I planned to do, but that's fine okay so I'm going to move this down so I can pin up along here first because I'm doing this on the table if I was doing this on the floor and I could I could put all the wires in stretch the whole thing out and then pin it last that would probably be my preferred option but I can't do that because my table's not big enough so at the top here um it is kind of it is if you if you were doing it in the round it would be a square 
but because there's an opening it's more like a I kind of think of it as a sort of butterfly effect really but it is actually a square so um, to make sure that these triangles are as big as these triangles I'm going to block it so that these this um, these two pieces are side by side so I'm just going to line them up here and then I'm going to use the neck blockers for this just because it's a big show and I haven't got a ton of pins so I just want to make sure I have enough um, so I'm going to use the neck blockers along here because I'm using the wires I don't need to put the neck blockers right kind of side by side I can leave some gaps if you don't have wires these neck blockers are really good for straight edges but you would have to need to put them like one after, immediately after the other you can't leave any gaps because then when you stretch it you um get a bit of a sort of scalloped edge which you don't want along this top edge okay so i'm going to move this down a bit and get some more blocking mats i'm hoping i've got enough blocking mats to do this because it is a big shawl okay so let's stretch this as I can and then but for some reason on this side it seems to stretch more right so I'm going to have to redo this side because I haven't stretched it quite as much so I've got stripes it's fairly easy I can kind of line it up all the way along which I hadn't done So now I've stretched these posts um, till they're the same length and then I'm going to do the wires out here. So I'll just grab another wire and I will just tilt the camera over a little bit so you can see this bit. Okay, so now I'm going to put the um, blocking wire in here. So. Along the edge here, I've got um, a, I think it's a triple yarn over on the edge. So I'm actually going to just put the wire through all the triple yarn overs. It makes it quite easy to see how to put the wire in. The triple yarn overs have also got a bead. I will take the camera off uh, my tripod at the end and then give you like a close up. But I've got these big triple yarn overs at the edge uh, with a bead. So they're quite easy to see. The beads are just on the edging. I was tempted to put more beads in, but it does make it a bit slower, so I decided just to do beads on the edging on this one. Okay, so it's fairly easy with those big triple yarn overs to work out where to put the um, wire in. Now I'm just putting each wire in, each hole going in from the top to the bottom, just in from the top. I'm hoping one wire will do the whole edge just about. Okay, so I'm going to stretch this out while I'm here. Move this over a little bit. Okay, so I'm just going to stretch the edge, the end of this. So we got these. Um, Spines. Um, so what I was trying to, what I was trying to think of, and I just want to try and stretch that, um, so they go straight out from the middle along here. So just see if I can do that first. Right, approximately there, and then I'm going to pull each one of these points out. Now I've got to be a bit careful; I don't pull it too much because I haven't pinned it on the other side. I can pull it quite a lot here because it will be borrowing fabric from the other side so I can't pin it out as much as I probably will be able to do eventually. I'm just going to pin it out as much as I think and then I will go back 
then I've done the whole shawl and readjust it. If I pull this bit section too far now, when I come to do the opposite end of this square, I won't be able to pull it out as much as I want to. So that's just something I've got to be a little bit careful of. As I'm pulling, I don't think you can see that, but as I'm pulling, so when I started, this is going straight out like that. As I'm pulling, the spine is pulling this way. So I'm just going to be a bit careful. I don't pull it too much. Um, I'll have to go back and adjust it later on. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do there. And then I'm going to, then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'll just move the camera around again. So we'll do the same thing along here. So I'm basically just blocking this into a square really. So again, I'm going into these big yarn overs, um, triple yarn overs along the edge. It's the only yarn overs right on the edge. It's the only hole I can actually put them in. So it's quite easy uh, to work out where to put the wire. Right. So what I want to do now, I really want to make sure that, so from the centre here, this way, and the um, spines that go either side, all these lines should be the same length. Um, so I need to actually measure. Now I do have a proper tape measure, which I used to take the final measurements, but my um, blocking wires came with this. Um, yardstick I guess it is, it's, 30, it's in inches, it's 36 inches, um, probably a bit more than a yard. Um, I, my original set of blocking wires were ordered from the States um, and they came with this measuring stick. The current wires I got now are actually from Nippo and they didn't come with this, but I've still got this so I might as well use it. So that's 31 inches. At the end I'll use a tape measure to do proper measurements. I'm just going to check from so from here to the top is 30 let's say 31 inches and from here out to each corner of the shawl needs to be the same length so I'm just going to measure the bit the first bit I pinned out okay, which is not quite okay and then I'm going to measure along here So I want the edging to come out to here where my finger is. Oops. Okay, I've got a rather precarious setup here because I've got a um, tripod for my phone which is set up on a chair. So I'm just going to put a pin where I want to stretch this to. Makes it a little bit easier to stretch it. And then grab, so there's a spine here. I will show you those spines when I finish. I will just kind of take this off and do like a close up of each section of the shawl so you can see properly what I've done. So I've just pinned that out, so now I'm going to just stretch this edge out while I'm here before I do the next section. So again, the same as the other section, I can't stretch it too much at the moment because um, I need to stretch the other half of the shawl as well so I get it all even. But I can do a little bit. wire has come out. There we go. There we 
go. Okay. Let's see what we're going to do next. So now I'm going to let me just move this a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to pull this section back so that it rests on the chair so I can do the other half. So if we put one chair like that, one chair here. So pull this section up so that I need room for one, two, three. Pull this right off the table so that I've got room on the other end to block this shawl. There we go. This would actually be a lot easier if I had bigger blocking mats. So you can get some really big ones from um, uh, hardware stores, Shopping UK called Halfords, which sells so for cast, they do really big ones. I'm just going to put my blocking mats in on this half of the table. And I'm actually slightly worried that I haven't got enough blocking mats um, because the shawl is so big. So we'll see. If I don't have enough blocking mats, I actually take one out of the middle. So we'll see. I might be okay. So now I want to follow this straight line where I got these pins. I want to follow this down here and I want it to be 31 inches from where my finger is. Oops, which is actually slightly off the table, um, which is a bit of a problem because I'm running out of blocking mats. So. I'm going to take those out and I'm actually going to take a blocking mat out of the middle here because I need one more at the bottom here. So let me just rearrange this a little bit. So let me move the chair, let me try put this on a little bit too. measure uh, that's 31 so you'd want to go roughly to here okay so you find the middle here and pull it down here okay so now you can see it goes a straight line all the way up you can see that spine quite clearly there so now I'm going to Get my blocking wires. I'm going to pull the chair around. Um, I do. Excuse me for the scraping chair noise on the on the floor. I have problems with my back, so I do find it easier to sit when I'm working um, like this rather than stoop over the table. Okay, so now this wire. When I stretch, stretch this shawl out, it's actually a little bit shorter than the full length of each edge. I could probably use two, but there's only like two of these points that don't fit on the wire. So I'm not going to do, I'm going to just pin them out separately. So now I want to stretch this as much as I can. Oh. Ow, just stuck a pin in my finger. <laughs> okay, let's put pins in along here. So once I've pinned all four sides out, I then need to start checking measurements to make sure they're all roughly the same. But 
the screw this first. So this last one down here doesn't have the wire through it. So I'll just take a pin and pull that out. For these edges here, you don't need wires. You can just put a pin in each of these big yarn overs and pull it to get the scalloped edging. I still prefer to use wires because it's a lot quicker and you don't need a pin in each one. So it does make it a lot easier. Okay, so let's go over and do the other side. So let's go along this edge here. And really can do with a blocking wire hit mat here. So the one that's on the bottom of this table, I'm actually going to move that one and put it here. And then I'm going to pull this out. Now, if you have um, pinned it, pulled it too too far on the other edge, you might find that it starts to kind of curl up. Um, so you, you lift the blocking mats. So obviously it's a little bit difficult to see because my blocking mats are not on the table on the other side so they're lifted up slightly anyway. Um, but this is where you'll find if you've pulled one side of the shawl too much on the opposite side it will just kind of lift it up like that and then you need to just release a little bit of the tension. I tend to stretch shawls as much as I can. I basically stretch them to within an inch of their lives. Um, garments and things I will obviously do to a measurement but for shawls I just stretch them as much as I can. So that's basically it. So now I'm going to go and check all the measurements to make sure that all these sides are the same and the point from the centre out to the edge is the same because I think the half over there is a little bit bigger. So I'm going to take my Thick. I'm going to just want to count how many of these points I have along the edge. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 11, 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So halfway between 6 and 7 is the middle. So I'm going to put my stick, and that's 19. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm just going to check the other side. That's 23. So the other side of the shawl is much, much bigger than this, which I suspected. So, um, this one is 18, the other side is 23, and I'm not going to be able to stretch this by 5 inches. Uh, so what I'm going to have to do is go around the other side and release a little bit of pressure um, on the other side. So, let's slide this back on the table, just my camera slightly. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull these, this edge a little bit. So I'm just going to move it back a little bit more. I'm just going to move the chair that the camera is on because I need to move this back a bit more. There we go. Hang on. Really what I could do with is a big board that was bigger than my table. That this could fit onto that would be amazing um but as i'm using the my dining room table that's also a little bit awkward to make so what i'm going to do is i'm actually gonna because i can't pull it too much further in the opposite direction uh, so i'm going to pull this a little bit to hopefully move like the whole shawl up a little bit so i'm just going to take all these out and then I'm going to pull this. There we go. And then these back in. It just stretched the bottom half of the shawl a little bit, really. Um, I must admit, sometimes I don't think through exactly the shape of the shawl and how much space I'm going to need when I first start blocking it. 
and then I get to this point and I'm thinking now I need to move things a little bit to get it kind of in the center of the table so there we go that's better um okay so now I'm gonna measure from the center out of the edge here so that's one two three four five six one two three four five six so in the middle here 22 that's better so we'll check the same thing on this side one two three four six okay, so that's not quite so i'm going to pull let me just move the camera around a little bit So I'm gonna, this on this side is 22 inches this side is not one two three four five six so I'm going to just check it's not far off so I'm just going to put this here and I really want the edge to come out of here there we go so not the where I put the points in but the actual edge of the shawl here so I'm just all the way along here now how fast you are about these kind of measurements is up to you. Um, when I first block a pattern, um, so I get like finished measurements for the actual show, I tend to be quite fussy. And then if I re-block it later on, I tend to be less fussy. But I need to get accurate measurements for the pattern. So that's why I have to be fairly accurate when I first do this. So now I'm going to pull this back onto the two chairs on this end. So now I'm going to check the measurements from here to here. I'll just move that around a little bit. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So I want that to be by 22 inches, which is not. There we go. So I want the 22, I want this bit here to come out of here. So I need to stretch it by about another inch. So I'm just going to grab this bit, move that back a bit, there we go, that's about how far I wanted to come. So I'm just going to go around and adjust all the pins. And normally I would measure to the point, but because I got 12 points along the edge, halfway along the edge is halfway between its middle two points, so that's why I'm doing that. That's why I'm not measuring along to the edge. I'm measuring here rather than here. Okay. But you know exactly how accurate you are, how fussy you are, really is personal decision. If this was just for my personal use, I wouldn't be as I would probably just eyeball it. But because it's not, I need to have accurate measurements for the pattern. I need to make sure that it works. So last edge. 22, so I need to stretch it by quite a lot here because it's about two and a half inches shorter where it needs to be. So, but this was the final side I um, measure, I pinned out. So that's why this needs stretching a bit more. If you overstretch it more on one half, you can't stretch it, uh, stretch it as much on the other half. And that's what I did. So let's just... It's supposed to be coming out a little bit more. So what I recommend when you block a shawl, um, if you've knitted to the correct tension, then it should block out as much as the pattern says, obviously. Um, if you have um, not knitted to the correct tension, then you might end up bigger or smaller. I would with shawls, rather than worrying too much about the measurement, I would just pin it out as um, much as you can. So let me just check that this is correct now. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So 
still not quite there. So with shawls, I tend to stretch them as much as you possibly can. Um, with garments, obviously you've got to be a little bit more careful and block them to measurements, but with shawls, I tend to just stretch them as much as I can. Right, I think we're nearly there. Okay, so I'm going to just see if I can take the camera off my holder. Hang on. That. If I can do this without putting my hand in front of the lens. Oops, there we go. Okay, and I'm just gonna flick you around quickly, see if I can do that. There we go, okay. So, just a quick look at what I've done. So you can see how the shawl is basically a square with an opening down here. So that when it sits on you, it doesn't sit on you like a square, it just drapes quite nicely around you. It's got stripes to start with and then lace and then here is this big triple yarn over that I talked about with a bead there so you can see how that looks so what I need to do now is just measure it and take all the measurements I need for the pattern and then I can finish the pattern later on and on my dress form over there is my new pattern Trebian which I released this morning so there we go. Okay. Okay, so let me flick you around again. Um I'm gonna sit down for a minute. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Hope that was useful. The recording will be around for 24 hours, so if you missed the beginning, you can watch it again. And then I will also up if it saves okay, I will upload it to my Facebook group, Love of Lace Knitting. There's a link to that in my bio, and I might also upload it on YouTube when the pattern is released. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a lovely day.